we're still back in the engineering lab. Here's when we build prototypes and things. You know, we have a plethora of wire. You can see all, all kinds of gauges and wires and you know, little tiny stuff. Um, this is, this is um, uh, tubing. And what else? Anything interesting here? Here's more. This is called shrink tubing. So this, these are little tubes that we can put wires through. And um, we don't actually put the wire through it. We put the ends, like if you have a connection, put the ends through it, you snip it off, uh, or where two wires join, and then we use a heat gun, and it, it shrinks it right up. Um, my buddy Ray Kimber from Kimber Cable owns a heat shrink company, actually, which is kind of cool. This is just a sleeve. We use these to sleeve very tiny wires when we're building um, prototypes and stuff. So, and here's some big shrink tubing. You can maybe see that. Cool stuff. Okay, and little bins of fastons. You know what a faston is? See that? The little guy's called a faston. It pushes on. You s you put a wire in here, and then you crimp it and that, uh, that's an easy quick connect, some people call them. We call them fast ons. All right, Rob in the Netherlands. Hey, Paul. For many years, 24 to be precise, I listened to the same revealing electrostatic speakers, the audio static ES100 full range line source made in the Netherlands. Hmm. I have never had a chance to hear that. I'll bet they're very revealing. During this time span, my listening sessions are getting shorter and shorter, and one of the main reasons is I get irritated by recording flaws. Well, you do have electrostats, man. I mean, anything wrong on an electrostat, it'll just cut through you. Um, also, by the big classic music labels. Now, he's suggesting here there's a lot of good music. Yes, there is, with bad recordings. Yeah. And also, a lot of bad music with good engineering, and rarely the two, good engineering and good music. What's your opinion of this matter? And, just curious, you always call it Music Room 1. Is there a Music Room 2? <laughs> I've been waiting for somebody to, to ask that question. Um, well, we'll start with the easy one first. Is that going to stay there? Nah. Punk. Um, music Room 2. Well, I had a Music Room 2, and it's right next door to Music Room 1. And I, I had worked for uh, a number of years on an experimental speaker. And it was a single speaker that produced the most incredible soundstage in stereo. And, and, and kind of like the old Bose 901s, of course those were, you know, of a different era. This is a single box that pressed up against the wall, maybe about that far from the wall. It was, and, and it was called a sonic holographic generator. And you know, I put a lot of time in that. I patented it. You can look the, the patent up if you want. It's a, I think if you just look that up under my name, look up Paul McGowan, and you'll find the, the patent on it. It was a fun project, and that was music room number two had that in there. And we used to bring people in and play, especially I had a Bella Fleck piece uh, live that was just stunning. I mean, anywhere you were in the room, and this wasn't a uh, hold your head in a vice kind of speaker system like, like your electrostatic uh, pretty much is. You could walk probably 160 degrees anywhere in the room and you would hear this amazing image. And here's, here's what's really cool, and this is the thing that I, I like so much. If you think about it, if you actually had a stage and musicians were playing on the stage, as you walk around the room to the left, to the right, and to the center, what would you expect? Well, you'd expect to hear the left side of the stage and the right side of the stage. You'd still, you wouldn't lose out like, you do on a pair of, of stereo speakers. I mean, you move out of the range of a stereo speaker to the left, and you're only going to hear the left speaker. And the same with the right speaker. But that's not right. So that image that we form with stereo speakers is just an illusion within the bounds of the speaker. This system that I designed, anywhere you walked, you were actually like on the left side of the stage, but you could still hear the image of the right stage. It's pretty cool. I, I never did anything with it. There's a whole bunch of reasons why. And then those went away, and we then put in, what did we have? 
I think we did Sprout. That's where we, when we when my son Scott started the Sprout project, which was his, we used that room to voice Sprout, and we had a nice setup in there. And then over time, and I'm I'm dragging this out too long. Sorry, uh, we ran out of room as we are now. I mean, I, this place is busting at the seams, and I lost Music Room 2 because we needed it for production. So someday uh, when we move and we are planning, well, fingers crossed, put in, we put an offer in on a building. We'll see what happens. Those, those things are, are tricky. Uh, but if we do move, that'll, that'll be really cool because then we, we can go back. I actually want three music rooms. Uh, anyway, we'll go into that. That's What was the original question? Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, what's my opinion? Well, first off, I think your electrostats are challenging. They're very revealing, and you have to be very particular about the music that you listen to. Now, I my speakers are extremely revealing, the Infinity IRS, but they're not challenging in the same way your electrostats are. So one thing you could do is think about retiring those bad boys and getting something that still is revealing yet is a little easier uh, on you, uh, you know, from, from that standpoint. That's one way to go. Now I have, and I've published a number of times, Paul's Dirty Dozen, Paul's 36. I mean, I, I, if you go back and look up uh, uh, psaudio.com, go into where Paul's post is, or you can just search Google and, and look up uh, Paul's picks, I think it was, you'll see my list of music that I use. And it's all over the map. There's It's a Perlman to Dire Straits. And I have a wide range of music that I use for voicing electronics and soon loudspeakers too. So I, I think it's your electrostats. Um, I, I owned electrostats for years and years and I had to be so restrictive with my music and the stuff that sounded great was wonderful. But head and a vice, no bass, and boy, any little thing wrong and you'd really hear it. They're, they're, they're a bit too revealing for my tastes. Okay, thanks, and uh, I appreciate the question.